Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game Kibble Scuffle. This was sent to me by WizKids, and is designed by Keegan Akawada, Jennifer Graham Mock, Scott Gratian, and Jace Jesse Heydrich. I'm sure I pronounced all of your last names correctly. Wow, we have a lot of cats, and they all need to eat. Clash their personalities in fun and exciting ways to feed them kibble and win the game. Kibble Scuffle is a tactical card game of area control to try and get the best food for your feline friends. Let me show you how to play. So in Kibble Scuffle, you are trying to be the player who feeds their cats the most points in food cubes by the end of the game. At the start of the game, you have these three food bowls here, uh, and then uh, you have this game box, which this might be the best part of the whole game, and I'm, I mean this in a good way. Uh, it's a, bo a cat food box, and you pour out little pieces of kibble that is absolutely adorable. Um, I think presentation goes a long way. With that said, it can be a little tricky for them to fall out, but still uh, pretty great. I kind of love this. So you have your four pieces of kibble on each bowl to start, and then each player gets their own deck. Uh, there are four decks, and they all have identical cards. Each person will draw five cards from their hand as their starting hand. On your turn, uh, there is a placement phase and then every now and then a feeding phase. Ma the majority of the game uh, will be a placement phase where you're placing cards around the bowls and resolving abilities. The current player plays a card from their hand to a food bowl of their choosing. When you place a card at a bowl, you resolve the ability. Um, if a cat is moved to a new food bowl for any reason, that cat's ability resolves again. So let's say I play um, Laser Pointer. I put Laser Pointer says, until your next turn, all cats must be played at this bowl. So I play it here. Now anyone else who plays a card has to play it there. And that's a regular turn. Uh, however, if on your turn, if there are at least five cats at any bowl, then you pause the placement phase and you do the feeding phase. Um, so let's go into the feeding phase. Let's say after a couple turns, so for example, Fat Cat counts as two cats at a bowl. Let's say that player played that card. And let's say this player played Kitten. You may play another kitten from your hand to a bowl of your choice. Let's say they played another kitten from their hand. Uh, now there are five cats because the Fat Cat counts as two cats. Uh, so, so then it's time for the uh, feeding phase. The current player feeds one of their cats at the food bowl uh, by doing the following. Now, one thing that's important to note is that these food cubes have different values. The brown cubes are worth three points, the orange cubes are worth two, and these white ones are worth one point. So the current player chooses a card, in this case, the pink player, discards one of their cats, but that cat gets to eat a cube, and you take the cube and put it in your possession. The next player on the left uh, at the bowl, uh, this player will take a cube and discard their cat. And then Fat Cat eats two cubes. Now there's no more kibble, so any cards left are discarded. And that's how a feeding phase works. As soon as there are five cats there, you just one by one start taking the cubes. And then after that, you refill the bowl uh, up to four cubes. You just continue play like that, playing cards to bowls and feeding them once they reach five, until uh, a player has reached a food point total of 20 or more. Everyone then compares their scores, whoever has the most points in food cubes wins. If two or more players are tied for points, the player with the fewest food cubes wins. So pretty simple. Now it's just gonna go into a couple of the cards you can find in the game. Here we got Mama Cat, uh, another cat at this bowl eats immediately, so you can grab food right away. Mangy Cat, move another cat at this bowl to a different bowl of its owner's choice. Copycat, discard Copycat to play another cat from your discard pile. Alley Cat, swap the food cube that Alley Cat eats with one owned by another player. Trickster Cat, switch all food cubes of the uh, feud, switch all food cubes at this bowl with all food cubes from another bowl. Uh, as you can see, there's all sorts of different ways you can manipulate the cubes, feeding order, other cats, but at the end of the day, you're just placing your cards strategically and trying to get the best food from the bowls at the right time. Uh, and that's pretty much the game. So in this game, the presentation of the cat food box 
does a lot for me. Yeah, sometimes the cubes don't come out exactly right, but I just thought this was such a cute, novel, above and beyond idea. It really charmed me, and I do think presentation in games really matters. The gameplay is pretty good, you know, just very simple card play. It's got a similar feel to something like Smash Up, uh, but much less complicated, which is not a bad thing. Uh, there's enough to keep it engaging, although it's not going to amaze anybody who's played this sort of game before, but I think for a younger audience, uh, or for people who are newer to board games, I think this would be a very welcome uh, addition. The game is a little short for my taste, which, you know, you can easily fix by expanding the the point total. I think you could afford to be a bit longer, but I'd rather have that than it drag on too long. Overall, um, I think it's cute. Uh, I think, you know, the art is fantastic. The presentation is great. Uh, as a game, I don't think it's a must buy, but if you like the theme, if you're a cat lover and or you want something that's cute, kid friendly maybe, or just something that's a little more casual, uh, I would recommend this. It, it's, it's good for like a cute filler game and I like cats, and I love the box, so if, if, if any of those sound appealing to you, or if you fit in any of those categories, then uh, yeah, check it out.